Hi everybody, I hope that you are well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas and I am finally home! If you've been watching the channel for a little bit of time you may know that I've recently just got back from a three month backpacking trip which took me through Bolivia, Peru, a little bit of Colombia, Panama, <laughs> El Salvador, and then ending in the winter season in Colorado. So six countries, all very, very different. And so packing for this trip was quite difficult. I will link the packing video up here. I actually think that I ended up packing really well considering the circumstances. I used everything that I packed. I did pick up a couple of things along the way and I actually ended up sending a DHL package home Home because I decided that I'd had enough of cold weather about halfway through, decided to switch to warm weather. So I just sent a bunch of like jumpers and thicker things that I had back home. Uh, but all in all, I was really pleased with the packing. But in this video, I wanted to review the backpack that I actually took because it was the first time I'd ever taken this backpack on a trip. And I did promise you that I was gonna give this one a review. So that's what this video is going to be all about. But before we get into that, I'd like to introduce the sponsors of today's video Surfshark because there is no trip that I would be going on without my VPN. So Surfshark is a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network and what that basically means is that it turns your public Wi-Fi connection into a private one which has a whole host of benefits. For example, if you are in an airport or a cafe or anywhere where you are connected to a public Wi-Fi network, you don't have to put in any kind of password. Believe it or not, your device is at risk of being hacked. And we do this kind of thing all the time when we're traveling. However, when you have Surfshark switched on with the click of a button, you turn that public Wi-Fi connection into a private one. And that acts as a virtual shield on your device so that no hackers can get in immediately. With just the click of a button, you can change your virtual location to anywhere in the world. So this also allows you to do things like change your Netflix country. So you can watch the shows that you want to watch in the countries that they're streaming on. And have you ever had a message on your computer when you're trying to use a certain media or something online and it says, sorry, this media is not available in your country. It's really frustrating. But like I said, with the click of a button, you can change your virtual location to anywhere in the world where that media is available. And then suddenly, it is available to you. So a VPN is really something that we should all be having on our devices in 2023. And Surfshark is one of the only VPNs that allows you to have access to it on an unlimited number of your devices with just the one account. And of course, I've got an amazing discount code for you where you can get 83% off plus an extra three months for free when you use my code backpacking or using the link in the description. So the backpack in question that I took on this trip is called the Osprey Fairpoint 36 litres with wheels. So you may have all heard of the Fairpoint and Fairview range by Osprey, which are normally coming in 40 litres or 65 litres, but they normally don't have wheels. This is essentially the exact same backpack, except you can zip away the backpack straps on the back and you have a handle which comes out like this and wheels. So this is the backpack or suitcase, whatever you want to call it, that I have been traveling with for the past three months. It's the first time I've ever had a backpack with wheels. And the reason why I wanted to try it is because on one of my trips last year, I actually took a small suitcase with me and I loved the fact that I could wheel it everywhere. But obviously there was times where the streets were just too bad and I had to pick it up, put it on my head or whatever, and that just wasn't exactly convenient. So I've been searching for a kind of hybrid for for a while, which would literally allow me to do both, which is how I came across this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the pros, the cons, and then what my general consensus is. So the pros of this backpack. Firstly, I think it looks beautiful. Osprey are very, very good at making beautiful packs aesthetically. Like I love how neat it looks. It's got these compression straps on the front, which you can obviously slot things into. It has these mesh pockets on the outside, which you can slot things into as well. It has a bunch of hooks around the outside, which I have attached carabiners to. And to be honest, I often used all of these features. I found them super, super handy. And on that note, I was keeping these 
bungee cords with carabiners on the end inside here. And I did actually use these. If you watched uh, the El Salvador videos, you may have seen that this is how I ended up attaching this to a motorcycle that I was riding. So they actually did come in handy, just a side note there. The quality of Osprey backpacks is absolutely amazing as always. The handles are really thick and comfy and robust. The wheels are really robust. I felt like I gave this backpack a good battering, but it's still in perfectly good condition. I never had any issues with the quality of the handle, like pulling it up and down or anything like this. It was always perfectly functioning. And even the small details on Osprey, like the zips, they're just really, really good quality as well. You never feel like it's gonna break and you have, and because it's obviously zip up, you have the ability to lock it together with a padlock as well, which is what I really, really like. As a suitcase, this was super, super easy to to roll around like I would be rolling it across like cobblestones and it would very very rarely tip over so it was just a really user-friendly suitcase and as for the backpack straps I only used them once which really just confirms to me that like do I need a backpack but anyway I'll, I'll touch more across that later but this is how the backpack looks like on and actually considering that you've got some wheels right here this is actually really comfortable to wear like a lot comfier than you would imagine even when this is full like i've just put a pillow in it now but even when this was full and heavy it was still comfortable to wear but obviously it did mean that i had my other backpack on my front which is why i wanted the ability to wheel it and i'd say the final obvious pro of this backpack is the fact that it opens out like a suitcase like this it's not top loading i find that top loading backpacks just not very space efficient or user friendly these days so the fact that you can just you know completely open it out with a zip that's my pillow by the way is very very good so that's the pros but now moving on to the cons so i'm going to take this pillow out so the inside of the backpack looks like this it's just kind of one big storage space and i don't know how well the camera can show you but you've kind of got like the indents of the wheels in the corner here. It's also like sloped in the middle. And then you also have a pocket here which kind of eats into the room. I found this really, really hard to pack my things and get the kind of maximum amount of things that I could into this space. Basically, I felt like I wasn't able to utilize the space because of the shape of it. It was very difficult to create a packing cube configuration. That was a lot of words, but does that make sense? I just felt like I really wasn't able to utilize the space because this is 36 liters. If I'm honest, I reckon I was probably only utilizing 32 liters of it, which made me think I could pack more, but I just can't seem to figure out how to effectively pack it in there. So so that frustrated me a little bit because I was like, well, if I'm only packing 32 liters of things, then I might as well have a 32 liter backpack, which isn't so big. And on that note, although it's 36 liters, because of the extra room it needs to carry both the wheels and the straps and the handle, it's still the same size as the 40 liter backpack. So you're not actually saving any room on space there and it does fit in carry-on i brought this in all my carry-on flights but it's big for a carry-on you know and also i believe the normal weight of this backpack with nothing in is like 2.7 kgs which means that if you've got a weight limit on your carry-on luggage then it's quite hard to stick to under the limit if you're filling this up to the brim it ends up being like well not kind of heavy i think mine always ended up being around like 11 kgs so it was still like totally fine for me to carry upstairs and things i had no issues with that whatsoever but just in terms of like if an airline was going to be really strict with their like 7 kg or 10 kg limit you would probably struggle to keep it under with this backpack because of just like how heavy the initial weight is i would prefer if it had a clamshell style opening as opposed to just one big pocket i just feel like clamshell styles are the best in terms of organization and being able to find your things and everything like this and the final con that i wanted to say is a big reason why I wanted a suitcase is so that I could slip my brown electronics backpack 
over the top because it has one of those sleeves for a suitcase on the back. Let me show you. This is my brown electronics bag and um, I love the fact that it's got this sleeve here which means that you can like slot it over a suitcase because this one gets really heavy for me and so if I have the ability to like connect it with a suitcase that's really good um, which is why I was excited about this because it's just this one handlebar here as opposed to the two this does not slide nicely over it like you can but it would be it would just do that do you know what i mean it's not secure because it doesn't have the two handles holding it in place so for me it was a big shame that i wasn't able to utilize that and make the most of that which is something that i would be able to do with a regular suitcase so that's the final con of this backpack so you know it's definitely one which has its pros and cons. I'm really, really happy that I've been able to try it out. So now as for my consensus going forward with this bag, I'm definitely keeping it as opposed to selling it. Perhaps for a similar trip, because I do feel like I could make a use for this again. So general consensus, what this backpack has made me realize is that I can totally travel with a suitcase. Like I said, I put this in backpack formation once on the whole trip. I did not need to put it in backpack formation for the entire rest of the trip. You can wheel this thing across cobblestones. Like it's pretty robust for that. And I find with the style of backpacking that I'm doing nowadays, I wasn't finding myself having to walk across like really uneven terrain for a long period of time. Like sometimes I would walk half an hour to my accommodation, but normally that would be when I'm like in a town or in a city where I can literally just wheel this across the floor and that's way easier. So it's really made me go, oh, do you know what? I can travel with a suitcase, a small, one not a big one because obviously you do a lot of the time find yourself having to pick it up like to go upstairs or just to go up little steps or if is a bit uneven for a short amount of time if this was any heavier or bigger than it was I would be really really unhappy about having to pick it up but because it was still a small size I was okay with that otherwise you would then have to put it in backpack formation but putting it in backpack formation takes you you know 20 seconds and if you're going up like a small number of stairs it just feels like a big faff to put it into the backpack formation does that make sense so basically if i am gonna have something that's wheeled i still do want it to be small so that i can easily pick it up so i think going forward i will be traveling a little bit more with a suitcase and, and a suitcase that i can actually put this over the top of as well as long as it's a small one but yeah the other consensus is just i'm gonna keep this backpack i think it's really unique i love the fact that it's hybrid and i definitely I definitely don't think that it was a bad one for me for this trip, but I won't be bringing it on my next trip. It's almost like trying to have the kind of best of all worlds makes it not the best for everything. So when you have a backpack, it's amazing for when you need a backpack. When you have a suitcase, it's amazing for when you want to roll. And then when I've got both abilities, it is great, but it's not the perfect option for either. So I think I'm going to look at my trips in the future. And if I really think there's going to be a big mix of both where I'm going to want a backpack and a suitcase, that's where this is going to be perfect. But for the times where I'm like, realistically, am I going to be able to roll this almost everywhere? I will go for a suitcase. And if I'm like, realistically, am I going to have to pick this up the majority of the time? Then I would go for a backpack. And I still love my Eagle Creek Global Companion in 40 litres that opens up like a clamshell suitcase. Love that backpack to death. That one definitely has not seen the end of its day. But yeah, that is my review of this backpack. Sorry if I've been waffling way more than I should. You know that I always do. I really hope you enjoyed this video and feel like you've got to know this backpack slash suitcase a little bit better now. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.